much more to me. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego, every Sunday from 4 to 5 p.m. And you can also stream the show all around the world on am1170theanswer.com. My website is educateforlife.org. And I have a very special show today. Uh, we are going to be talking with one of the uh, volunteer pastors at Donovan State Prison and a uh, very special guest, as well as uh, two gentlemen who accepted Christ in prison and have had a uh, Christ has had a dramatic impact on their life. And uh, they're going to share with us some of their story. And uh, I wanted to talk about this issue because, you know, it's been in the news that the Supreme Court not too long ago denied Governor Jerry Brown in California. He wanted to petition the uh, federal government to not enforce a ruling that California had to release some of its prisoners because the, the prisons are so crowded in California that uh, the federal government said, hey, you just have way too many prisoners, over 100,000 uh, inmates and uh, just a lot, a lot of people in prison. And they said, uh, you're going to have to let people go. And so this is a controversial issue, and, and, it, and it's, a, it's a big issue. Big deal. Today, 2.3 million inmates are behind bars. This is in all the country. And 95% of all prisoners are eventually released. The sad fact is that two out of every three prisoners will actually reoffend and end back up in prison. And just this year, you're going to have 700,000 prisoners who are going to be released. And the question, the real big question here is this. Who are those people going to be when they come out of prison? Are they going to be better off? Or are they going to be worse off? And that's a question we all have to deal with. That's a very relevant question, regardless of whether you yourself are in prison or not or end up in prison or not. It's a it's a question that's relevant to all of us because it affects all of our culture and our society. And so we want to make informed decisions regarding this. Well, like I said, uh, one of my guests, uh, his website is pastors to prisoners dot O R G. His name's Roger Ziegler. He's a, he is a yard pastor and uh, he served at RJ Donovan as a volunteer in the Protestant religious program for over 10 years before he entered full-time ministry with pastors to prisoners as a yard prisoner. He's also served in Kairos, uh, the Kairos ministry. He has a brown card identification, which what that means is he's allowed to actually take volunteers into the prisons himself. And I myself have gone with Roger into the prisons uh, a few years back. And um, so he's, a, he's got an incredible ministry. Roger, I just wanted to say thank you for being on the show today. Oh, it is my honor to be here with you, Kevin. Thank you. Th- thank you so much. And... Um, Freddie and Ralph, uh, two Christian brothers here are also here. Guys, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, and I'm going to uh, give them an opportunity to share their story. But, Roger, I wanted to start off with you, and if you could just share a little bit of background as to how you ended up um, having a heart for those who are in prison and uh, how God led you to that uh, decision to become a, a, a you know, in full-time ministry. As right. A, well, yeah. it, it all began back in the year 2000, and my wife and I, uh, Peggy, were attending the Rock Church, and uh, one of the pastors there, uh, a good brother named John Leader, uh, just made an announcement that they wanted to start a prison ministry there at the Rock Church, and for some reason, I, I, I volunteered, and next thing you know, after a few months of going through the clearing process, uh, I got cleared, and me and a, a gentleman named August Hunter, uh, we went in uh, one Tuesday afternoon. John Leader led a Bible study on the Charlie Yard for about 30, about 45 minutes. And as we were walking to our vehicle afterwards, he turned to us and he says, oh, by the way, this is your ministry now. And so that was my introduction to prison ministry. I really wasn't planning on being there as long as I have. That was 15 years ago. Wow. But God has a way of doing things and, and he does the unexpected but uh, I have been uh, involved in, in ministry at Donovan and other facilities uh, for the last 15 years, and it has, it has impacted my life in ways that I can't even begin to share with you. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, that's incredible. Um, you know, just so people have an understanding, so our listeners understand better, you mentioned the Charlie Yard, I believe you said. Right. Can you um, help us understand the different kinds of yards there? That are- right. Yeah. At Donovan, we have five yards, and they're broken down into Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta Yard. And then there's a minimum yard called the M Yard. The yards have different levels of, of security. 
for example, the Charlie Yard is a maximum uh, security level four. And then the minimum, of course, would be a level one. And then uh, the other yards are in between either level two or level three. So the Charlie Yard is the maximum yard. This is where probably 60 uh, to 70 percent of the of the men there are doing life or life without parole. Now, do you spend a majority of your time in a particular yard? Or I, I'm on the yard on, on on the Charlie Yard pretty much uh, five days a week. Okay, and so Roger, um, when you go into what does your weekly schedule look like here as you're going into the prisons and everything? What what does it look like? Uh, your job look like? Well, my day begins Roger? obviously on Sunday. Uh, we get into the prison uh, right about eight o'clock. And uh, we uh, we have uh, three Protestant services there that last from eight until pretty much four. And we have volunteers that go on with us. And so we provide basically your your typical worship service. We have we have men coming in. We have a worship team uh, uh, that that is put together by the guys in blue. And uh, we simply have a church service. We have baptisms. We we have uh, prayer going on. Uh, we have testimonies, and so that would that would be the beginning of my week, like like a typical Sunday. And then Tuesday, I would be there doing a discipleship program. We have a year long discipleship class that we take the men through. On Wednesdays, we go and we have a prayer and share time. On Thursdays, I do the same discipleship program, but on Bravo Yard. And then on Friday, we have what we call a new believers class, where we can take uh, the men who are new converts in Christ and, and begin to build a foundation doctrinally and theologically for them. I see that. Okay. That's fantastic. Now, um, when you're, when you're there, are you seeing a lot of prisoners, uh, inmates coming to these, uh, Sunday school, the, the Sunday, uh, you know, chapel, services. chapel surfaces are a lot of new people coming or we, yeah, we typically have, uh, anywhere from, from 25 to as many as 60 men per service. Okay. And in in a particular service, we may have anywhere from one, three, four first timers. And so we are we are bringing men, and it's the guys in the yard that are reaching out to the to the to the non believers, and they're bringing them into the chapel. Wow. Now, are you seeing um, lives changed in a big way? I mean, is that is that oh. a common thing or is that uh, is that rare? Or? It is. It is as frequent as you can imagine. So so like every week. And what does that look like? What what how, do you give an altar call uh, at the at the chapels or how does that? Uh, occasionally we'll give an altar call. But, you know, we, we have men who are coming into this chapel. Some of them are attending church service for the <laughs> first time ever. Sometimes it's been over 20 years. And so they're coming back to uh, a place where that, that yard, it can be very hostile. Yeah. And they come into a place of sanctuary and they see volunteers there. Sometimes as many as 15 to 20 volunteers. And, and they come and they're, they're welcome. They're, they're, they're greeted. They're loved on. And, and the Holy Spirit takes that, that love and it transforms their lives. Wow. Now, um, for everybody who's listening out there, uh, my guest today, Roger Ziegler, he is a chaplain, um, a, a volunteer pastor at Donovan State Prison. If you want to get involved with what he's doing, um, you can. Pastors to Prisoners org is his website. And you, if if this is a, if you feel a tug on your heart from the Holy Spirit, you can actually get involved in going down to the prisons, and you can contact him. And uh, super nice, loving guy, and. Uh, a big blessing to the people that the inmates in the prison to have to know that people are caring about them, thinking about them, praying for them. And I have two very special guests uh, also besides Roger here this evening, uh, Freddie and Ralph, and they are going to be sharing uh, how this kind of ministry has impacted their lives. And I can't wait to uh, to let you listen to them. Uh, we're coming up on a break here. And I wanted to share a scripture here. It's a pretty powerful scripture. It's Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus talking. He says, Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of, of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And, you know, um, there are some people that are oppressed inside a prison, and there's lots of people that are oppressed outside of a prison. And a lot of times, um, you, you may think, Hey, the person 
person in prison is the person that is uh, trapped or confined or oppressed. But a lot of times we have made prisons out of our minds. And um, the Bible is very clear about that, that there's also a spiritual Amen. prison Amen. that you can potentially be in. And so as you're listening here, I want to encourage you um, that, that Christ wants to break you out of prison and out of bondage, and you can be set free even in a prison. In fact, you can potentially be more free in a prison than you are outside of a prison. Now, that doesn't seem intuitive, but uh, it's certainly true. And so when we come back from this break, I'm going to start us off. I'm going to um, give a chance for these two gentlemen to share their story and how uh, Jesus Christ impacted them inside of prison. We will be right back. You're listening to Educate for Life. Dot O-R-G. And uh, that's my website. We're on AM 1170, theanswer.com. And uh, can't wait to hear the testimonies and the stories of these two gentlemen in here. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Creation Earth History Museum for our 10th Annual Museum Day Family Festival, Saturday, September 26th. Hi, this is Jason Payne, museum curator. I want to personally invite you and your families to a free, fun-filled event including new exhibits, testimonies from leading scientific experts, meet NASA astronaut Colonel Jeffrey Williams and many others. Activities for the entire family. So join us Saturday, September 26th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go online to learn more at creationsd.org or call 619-599-1104. 619-599-1104. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 730 to 530, and Saturdays, 730 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Not all home inspections are created equal. Experience matters. Joe DeMars and his team at Housemaster have performed inspections in San Diego for 22 years plus and performed over 10,000 inspections for commercial, multiple family, apartments, and residential. So call before you buy or sell and protect your investment. Call 619-660-7866 or online at sandiego.housemaster.com. Home inspections done right. Guaranteed. 619-660-7866. San Diego's home for intelligent, conservative talk. AM 1170. The answer. Thanks for listening. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer, in San Diego. You can also stream the show at am1170theanswer.com. My website's educateforlife.org, and you can get a recording of this show tomorrow, and uh, it's podcast. It's on iTunes. My guest this evening is Roger Ziegler. He is a volunteer pastor in Donovan State Prison for around 15 years. He's been doing this. And I want to start off by um, this segment by introducing Freddie. Freddie... um, you were impacted by prison ministry, and you're involved in prison ministry uh, now. And I wanted to ask you um, a little bit about your backstory. How did you? Uh, what was your life before you were in prison? Then what happened to you in prison? And then what are you doing now? Amen. First of all, I want to give an honor to God, and I want to give an honor to you, Kevin, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, I want to start off by saying um, I was born and raised in Compton, California. That's where I was originally from. I started banging in Linwood. I started banging back in 73. Okay, so some of our audience might not know what banging is, okay. uh, Freddie, but... Uh, I'll let... Okay. Yeah, uh, t- basically t- a gang. I was in a gang. And w- what gang was that? The Crips. The Crips, okay. I also uh, ran with Tookie Williams. I was one of Tookie Williams' homeboys. I actually ran with him. Okay. Fighting the police and doing yeah. what we do. So I started gang banging back in 73 all the way up to the mid-90s. Um... My life was a life that uh, basically I, w- I was about, you know, uh, fighting and shooting at the police and, you know, doing what we do. There's a lot of that going on in the country tonight. Uh, right now, a lot of racism going on that we're yes. seeing in uh, all over the country, really, in a lot of ways. Really, really sad. And it, it really saddens my heart. 
Um, I also have 21 years of prison up under my belt. I started back in the, the early 70s, 76, 77. Was very wild, vicious, didn't care about nobody. Someone that had a bad reputation in the prison. Um, I, I was known for taking care of business. In other words, taking your head off. Yeah. Um, so just my, a life of violence. Yes, yes. My life was a life that, uh, if you want to put it in this terms, I didn't care about nobody. Um, I've had one of those lives where I would just get go back and forth out of prison, back and forth. I would get out, go back, get out, go back, get out, go back. Uh, Mid-90s, um, I was uh, caught up in slang and drugs. I used to be a known drug dealer, too. Um, about 96, I was downtown L.A. That's where I went to jail at downtown L.A. Thank God for the change. Amen. Yeah. Um, I got incarcerated uh, 96 and finally was in Donovan about the last part of 96 all the way up to 2006. OK. Um, my life was impacted a couple of ways. One, um, I was one of the actually shot callers at Donovan. OK. So explain that. What What is that? Shot caller is the one who tells everybody else what to do on the yard. Okay. Uh, so you were kind of in charge of a lot of other, uh, from from a from an inmate standpoint, you were kind of telling everybody else what to do. As we would say, I was the man. Yeah. Let's put okay. it that way, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, my life got impacted uh, several ways, and, and, and I want to I wanna make sure this is clear because we, we our message is, is to tell them about Jesus, nothing else. My life was impacted a couple of ways. Uh, I had a sister that passed away, a father passed away, a grandfather passed away, and I was very grieved and I was very angry. You know, yeah, couldn't go to the funeral, so I had a lot of anger inside of me. I had a friend, his name is Mouse, Mousy. Mousy is someone that I always talk about a lot. Uh, in the prisons, you don't, you don't, you don't get to interact with other races. O- other words, you stick with your race. Okay, uh, Mousy uh, impacted my life. Uh, Mousy was someone that uh, he's a lifer without. He's never getting out of prison. Never. Uh, we became friends. Yeah. Now, was, uh, was he a black guy? No, he was a Spanish guy. Oh, okay. That's what I'm going to get to. Okay, right I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh, Mousy was in the Mexican mafia. Oh. Okay. Anybody who knows anything about prisons. You know, Crips and mafias don't don't mix. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Mousy was someone who impacted my life to the point where we were talking one day, and he said, "Hey, Fred, have you ever thought about going to Cairo's? Now, you need to understand all the stuff that I was telling you about my sister and father. All that was that prior week. Yeah. And when he was talking about Cairo's, I said, "Man, what are you talking about, Cairo's? Man, I ain't trying to hear him about no Cairo's right now." <laughs> I was bitter and yeah, angry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was the best thing that could have happened to me because Kairos turned my life around. Now, Kairos is the is the Christian ministry within. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Within the prison. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, actually, that's how I actually met Rogers too at the same time. Okay. Um, it's impacted my life to the point now. Now I'm a volunteer. Wow. But I'm also a pastor myself. That's incredible. Okay. That's the power. Uh, that's the power of Jesus to turn oh, his oh, life around. Right. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 and my message is to those who are listening is don't never judge anyone because you never know how that person's going to turn out. I'm a prime witness. I am a living witness what God can do in your life. Amen. I am somebody that uh, I'm, I'm, I stay in Whittier right now. I'm in Whittier. I go to a church called Zoe Christian Fellowship Church. It's a known church. It's very known. Uh, some people there have impacted my life, and I've also told them about Kairos. But the thing about this prison ministry <clears throat> is this. This prison ministry is real. I am a living, a living, living, not I want to say sacrifice, but let's just say I'm someone that's a product of Kairos, how it would impact your life. Wow. And we we come because we want to share with the the people that are listening that we don't want you to just listen. We challenge you to come. We challenge you to come and get involved because we believe that 
not only what God is doing in our life, but what he's doing in your life also. Yeah. So for me, this is a blessing. This is something. And, and the reason why I bring this out, because I have a passion for this, because a lot of the guys who impacted my life are lifers without. And so I give back. Yeah. I go back because I want to be able to share, not because of what they've done, but what, what Jesus has done in my life. Amen. Amen. And so I go back to share with them because a lot of those brothers that know me and see me, they say, man, Fred, is that true? <laughs> but what I want to tell them is that just like Jesus is working in my life, he'll also work in your life too. That's fantastic. What a powerful testimony. What a powerful message. You know, I, I just want to encourage you, you know, wherever you're at in life, Christ can reach down and he can move in your heart and your life, whether you're in prison or not, whatever you're going through in your relationships, maybe your marriage is struggling. Maybe you're, you're struggling with finances, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, the fact of the matter is Jesus cares and he can move in your life. Um, you know, we're going to be right back. We have uh, three special guests in the studio today and uh, we're going to hear from Ralph uh, next and uh, he He's also got an amazing testimony. And then we're just going to chat. We're going to continue this conversation the, the rest of the hour. So stay with us. It's a powerful message. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. AM 1170, The Answer, and AM 1170, The Answer.com. Thanks for tuning in to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego, every Sunday, 4 to 5 p.m. You can stream the show around the world on AM 1170, TheAnswer.com. My website is educateforlife.org. You can download recordings. You can also watch recordings on my YouTube channel. I love to get emails, or uh, you can message me on Facebook. You can like our page on Facebook. I'd uh, love to hear from you and just get feedback on what we're sharing. You may, you may not know this, but in California, it costs about $47,000 to house an inmate every year. $47,000 just for one inmate. Now, in California, there were about 171,000 inmates. Now, they've gotten this down over time, but you're talking about a huge amount of money per year. That's $80 billion per year that California is spending on housing inmates. Now, there's got to be a solution to this problem. Consider this, uh, that about, there was a 15-year study they did a while back, two out of every three prisoners were going back to prison. Uh, what is the solution to this overwhelming problem? And you heard from Freddie, if you were listening last, uh, he was in and out of prison again and again and again. He was talking about this. Uh, in California, our debt is $1,126,000,000. Uh, we cannot survive like this. And I, I would argue that our finances are tied to our morality. Our finances, our financial struggles are tied oftentimes to whether we are following biblical principles or not. And the Bible talks a lot about money. A lot of people don't know this, but Jesus talked a ton about money. And he said, where your heart is, where your, where your money is, there your heart will be also. And this is important for us to understand. And I'm going to give um, Ralph a chance to talk. My guests today are uh, Freddie, 
Ralph and Roger. Um, Roger is a pastor in the Donovan State Prison, and um, we need solutions. And I think that Jesus in our prisons is a gigantic solution. And I think both Freddie and Ralph are a testimony to that. And I, I want to start, Ralph, um, could you just give us some background for you, kind of like what Freddie did? Um, what's your situation? Where were you before you went to prison? What happened in prison? And what's happening today? <clears throat> well, Kevin, I grew up in a, in a town about five miles north of this uh, radio station uh, with good parents, good community, good heart hardworking people. But first of all, before I get too far into my story, I want to thank you and Jesus Christ for having us here today, because having us three men here is a miracle in itself. Wow. It's but, a privilege. I got to tell you, Ralph, it's a privilege. I, I uh, am so honored to have you on the show. You don't even know. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I guess I can start by saying, uh, My troubles began with drugs. I had a 35-year drug addiction. And I spent 18 years of those 35 years in prison. Uh, and it w- little did I realize that <clears throat> my troubles were, would have been over if I had known that my salvation was just a prayer away. Wow. And it was uh, one evening, I was already getting ready to go and do my last term in 1998 when I could hear my wife, Jackie. Excuse me. That's okay. And my children talked to me. When I realized that I was going to have to turn myself in, go back to prison in just a couple of weeks, I started feeling very remorseful. I started feeling real bad. So I asked God to take the poison out of my life that had me captive for 35 years. When I went to prison, I started meeting pastors, uh, volunteers that were coming into the prison, talking about Jesus Christ. I started listening to them. And things started happening to me. Good things. And one night in my, in my cell, I, I gave my life to Jesus. And I was baptized in 1998, March 18th. And I've been serving the Lord ever since. But before Kevin, I, I've got to mention that be, before that happened, I tried everything. I tried kick pads, methadone, uh, just leaving town, but uh, it never did any good. But it wasn't until I had my encounter with the Lord that saved me. Wow. And I hope that there's a mother or a wife or a sister or children out there that are suffering right now because of drugs. I just got to say That Jesus is the answer. That's awesome, Ralph. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, you know, Freddie said, you know, he made a statement earlier. He said, all we want to talk about is Jesus. You know, he said, that's what we're here to talk about. And, you know, <clears throat> people, like Ralph said, people try everything, you know, uh, they try all these different things to try to get help. But when it comes right down to it, uh, this is not about changing people's behavior, is it, Roger? Well, we, 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 we've uh, discovered that you're not going to change their behavior until God changes their heart. Amen. That's there, a, there's yeah. many programs out there. But it is the faith-based programs that introduces a living Lord and he's the one who sets free. 
Absolutely. Uh, I just really hope that you're listening to this. Th- those of you who are struggling with stuff in your life, uh, this is a very true, very powerful message. We have uh, people in studio right now who have experienced this in a very dramatic way. And the fact of the matter is, you know, C.S. Lewis made a statement. He said, intelligence without Jesus Christ um, just makes man a more clever devil. Mm. And so you can educate people all day long. You can get them work skills. You can get them all these things. But is that ultimately going to solve the issue of the heart it's not because jesus christ comes in the heart and he changes the heart and it's not just behavior modification this is a spiritual transformation and so um this is what we need in the prisons and that's why i'm arguing for jesus in the prisons um we need more of jesus in the prisons because he doesn't just change how people act and give people good manners he causes them to love what's right and to hate what's wrong. You know, we're going to be right back. We're going to continue this discussion. My guests are Ralph, Freddie, and Roger, and uh, all involved in prison ministry, all uh, impacted by prison ministry. Um, A very, very important message for all of us, uh, regardless of where you're at in life. We're going to be right back. We'll finish this discussion. Gordon Tucker began serving San Diego County families. Today, the family tradition continues with two stores, Tucker's Valley Furniture and Cash and Carry, both right across the street in El Cajon at Maine and Mollison. Whether you want today's modern, eco-friendly furniture or authentic Amish furniture from solid cherry wood built in America, let the Tucker family serve your family. Learn more at tuckersvalleyfurniture.com. A proud sponsor of Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Do you have one-button espresso machines in your home or business? They make delicious coffee drinks, but they're not maintenance-free. Express Fix Coffee is San Diego's source for coffee and espresso machine repair, sales, and service. Call Dave Martin at Express Fix Coffee for new and used espresso machines, repairs, parts, and accessories. They'll save you time and money. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. Learn more at ExpressFixCoffee.com. This is AM 1170, The Answer. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego. You can also stream the show at am1170theanswer.com. And my website is educateforlife.org. I am a Christian apologist. What that means is I defend the Bible. And I argue uh, for the biblical position uh, and viewpoint on life. And today we're discussing a, a important subject, and, and that is the prisons. Our prisons are overcrowded, and rehabilitation is a big issue in our country today. Talking about how to deal with um, making sure that a person, when they end, when they go into prison, they don't come off uh, come come out worse off than they than they went in. And that's a real issue that we we have to deal with. And I wanted to share a scripture with you uh, tonight. It's Colossians 2, and uh, you can read 6 through 8. This is about 2, 7 through 8. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive Mm -hmm. through hollow and deceptive philosophy, Mm -hmm. which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. You know, we've we've heard the testimony of Ralph. We've heard the testimony of Freddie, uh, both incredibly powerful. But um, you know what they're sharing here is that Christ is the solution. You know, you can try all kinds of things in life. You can pursue all kinds of avenues. You can try uh, all these different things and you can fight against God. You know, a lot of people do, you know, he's their last resort. They don't, they, they want to try everything else before they, because they know they got to sub- submit their will to them, to him. But 
uh, please understand God is for you. He is not against you. Yeah. And what you're fighting against is the one who loves you the most, the one who died for you, the, the one who wants to fulfill you. He's not here to take away your freedom. He's here to give you freedom. Yeah. And so, um, guys, I wanted to kind of open it up to you and your thoughts. Um, as we're talking here, what's going through your mind? What do you feel? And, and I, this is kind of something that went through my mind. You know, when these guys are in prison, Ralph and, and Freddie, when you guys were in prison, what is it that you needed more than anything else? And, and Roger, I want to open this up to you, too, as well. I'll let you guys. Uh... Go ahead, Fred. Well, when I first started going to prison, I really didn't know what I need. I really didn't know what I, what I was searching for. All I was worried about was uh, getting drugs into the prison. Uh and running with my people, you know. Uh, but like I say, when I think, I was telling Pastor Roger the other day that all that, my testimony, it seems like so long ago because I don't, I don't dwell on that. I don't, I don't glorify that. My glory is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And that is what I boast about because without him, there is nothing you can't do. It says in the word, and I think it's in Matthew 15, it says there's nothing you can do without me. And that, and believe me, all that people that are hearing me right now, it's such a true verse. Mm-hmm. And take it to heart. But what I did find, and what I found out, that if I put the Lord Jesus Christ, number one in my life, everything else will fall into place. In my church, like I told you, I grew up in a little town called Solana Beach here. Uh, in my church, there's a, there's a little banner by the podium, and it says, Love God, love others, and serve Christ. And that is what my flag is all about now. And I, and I pray that every, anybody that, that, that hears those three verses there, if they can just even just hold one of those to their heart, they're going to be so much better off in life. Amen. And, and you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we go out and we talk at churches and we speak to men's groups and we're, we're always trying to, to remind them that, that Jesus says, when I was in prison, you visited me. And so we're not talking about a ministry that is vague and, and unbiblical. This is a biblical ministry. And, and and the difficulty and the frustration comes when when we're trying to to communicate this to the Christian community that we need men to come into the prison because a lot of times the fear settled, sets in and and that it, it goes no further than that yeah but but I want to I want to encourage men that like like when I started prison ministry back in two thousand my my idea was, okay, God, you, you want me to go in there and fix these guys, right? And God says, no, I'm sending you in there to fix you. Oh, wow. Volunteers that come in, their lives are, are transformed. And before we go any further, I just want to say that we are blessed beyond measure at Donovan State Prison because we have a God-fearing, spirit-filled chaplain, Bill Brown. Oh, amen. He and his wife, Mary, serve in that prison faithfully for many years. And then we have Pastor Jack, who everybody knows him. He is the founder of Pastors to Prisoners. We have men that we're standing on their shoulders. And so we welcome anybody to come in. And, and it's not about us. It's about Christ. And that's and that's 18 or older, right, Roger? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, because I, I, when I came in with you, uh, I brought some young right. uh, young men and women even. 18 and, years. Yeah, and uh, they were impacted. dramatically impacted by it. It was uh, amazing. Right. And um, I wanted to ask you, now, is this a problem? Um, it, is there a shortage of people going into the prisons as far as, um, can you explain the difference between jail, prison, a federal prison, and uh, uh, a local prison? Well, first of all, a jail is where you're going to go and uh, you've committed a crime and now you're, you're going to be held in a jail for sentencing. You may be there a year or, or longer before the trial comes. Once the trial comes and you've been convicted of a crime, now you're going to be sentenced and, you, and that sentence is going to take you 
either to a state or federal prison, dependent upon the circumstances of your crime. Okay, and and uh, so we're going to be coming right back here. We are running up here against a break, but um, we're going to continue to talk with Freddie, Ralph, and Roger, uh, talking about prison ministry, talking about reaching people in the prisons, and also talking about reaching the people that come into the prisons because it affects your life as Absolutely. much as you, you would affect, you know, you're going to impact their life. So uh, we'll be back. We have one more segment to go here. Where is that? Learn about what God is doing on the streets of Hillcrest. City on a Hill, San Diego, is an exciting ministry raising an army of people who love God in our city. Ryan Smith and his team take the time to talk with and know the people of the community, provide tracts and materials, and build Christian community. See the stories of lives being changed at cityonahillsandiego.com. Call for details, 619-354-2511. City on a Hill, San Diego, sharing faith, hope, and love. What do leading local restaurants have in common? They depend on Express Fix Coffee for new and used coffee and espresso machines, repairs, and affordable monthly service. Dave Martin and his local team provide water filtration services too. Call San Diego's best espresso repair company, serving your home and business. Learn more online at expressfixcoffee.com. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-867-3853. 619-867-3853. In 1947, Gordon Tucker began serving San Diego County families. Today, the family tradition continues with two stores, Tucker's Valley Furniture and Cash and Carry, both right across the street in El Cajon at Maine and Mollison. Whether you want today's modern, eco-friendly furniture or authentic Amish furniture from solid cherry wood built in America, let the Tucker family serve your family. Learn more at tuckersvalleyfurniture.com. A proud sponsor of Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Intelligent, conservative, AM 1170, the answer. Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. We're on AM 1170, The Answer in San Diego. And you can stream the show all over the world at am1170theanswer.com. My website's educateforlife.org. My guests today are Roger, Freddie, and Ralph. And uh, we're talking about prison ministry. Kairos prison ministry is um, a big part of what they're doing. This is Kairos is K A I R O S prison ministry.org. If you're interested in getting involved, uh, they need lots of help. There's a lot of um, space for people to get involved and make a huge difference um, in the prisons. So uh, very much needed. I wanted to open this segment with our last segment with Freddie. Freddie, you had something you wanted to share? Yes, really fast and quick. Uh, First of all, I want to start off by saying, you know, when I was in the prison and I had been in there for a while, and one of the things with me was I was introduced to the Christian community, but the problem was is that my mind wasn't renewed. I had to get my mind renewed first. What I'm talking about, getting into the word, prayer, uh, be around Christian brothers, and learn how to be Christ-like. That took a while because half of my life I've been in prison and I've never had no one to to help me in that particular area. Well, that's why I'm passionate about going back in because they say people like me who's been in there half of his life. He's no good. He's not going to change. I'm a prime witness what God can do in your life. What I'm saying is that you don't let nobody dictate your thoughts. You don't let no one tell you that Jesus is not alive. I am a prime witness what God can do in your life. The Amen. thing is, is you have to be committed. And when we were talking about the men for his coming in the prison, um, me and Rogers talk about this a lot. I just want to talk, talk about it just real quickly. And well, that I, is, Freddie, I, wanted, I wanted to say, you know, this is real encouraging to the to families out there who might have somebody that's going in the wrong direction to hear you say, hey, this can ha- if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. I mean, without a doubt. Uh, but me and Rogers always talk. And one of the things when Rogers was mentioning about volunteers, 
a lot of times this particular thing is something has to come from your heart. See, we of men, we, we're after God's own heart. Yeah. So we have a passion for this. And a lot of people won't volunteer because they're not getting paid for it. See, we come back because we have Jesus in our hearts. And we come back because we want these brothers to know that there is hope. Yeah. And we want this, these brothers to know that Jesus loves you. And we want these brothers to know that as you go along in this walk, is it going to be an easy walk? No. But we come to say that Jesus is the reason for the season. That's awesome. And so with us, with our, our pastor, we, we continue to tell these men uh, we want to challenge them. What I'm saying is that don't just sit on your behind. Come out. Yeah. See what this Kairos thing is about. It's changing people's lives all the time. Yeah. People complain all the time that, hey, wh- where's God working? Well, he's working yeah, in the prison. He, I guarantee you. He's working. Amen. Uh, Roger said this stuff's happening all the time. Ralph, did you want to add something to that? Well, I just want to say that uh, ever since I gave my life to the Lord and uh, I was introduced to the Kairos program, I had just been blessed. The things that uh, we do through Kairos, the way the Lord uh, uses us to do that is uh, by bringing in letters from from people out here. Uh, We bring in cookies, uh, prayer chains. And one of the things we we take them, we have uh, kids in Sunday school draw up these uh, placemats. And if I could just share a quick story, uh, something that happened in one of the Kairos programs, we we also take meals from, from the street. And uh, we put placemats, the placemats that these little kids have been drawing up in Sunday school. We noticed a man <clears throat> in tears. He was hurt. And uh, we asked him if he was okay, if he needed prayer. And all he was saying over and over and over, he said, I wasn't going to come. <laughs> I wasn't going to come. And, and, and we told him, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. He said, no, you don't understand. The placemat that was in front of him, we asked the kids to put their names, you know, and their age. That's all. He said, the the placemat that was placed in front of this man was the same name as his little girl, his daughter. What are the odds, you think? There's over 50 tables, four men at a table. They all come in and take a, take a stool and eat their dinner. What are the odds that this man was going to sit at that stool with that placemat with his daughter's name? Yeah, that's no coincidence. No, it isn't. It's a miracle. It, this is how God works through Kairos. And that touched that man. Yesterday, I spent the day at a prison ministry conference. In that, and in that hall, there must have been maybe 120 people. And out of all those people, all the men that had been in prison were all there. A lot of them had life sentences, and they were all Christians, serving God, doing whatever they can, trying to get places to, to, to or, or homes for when people get released from prison, a place for them to go, to work, to find trades, to make a better life for themselves. But it's all about God. He's mm. the man that is moving everything Thank you so much. Absolutely, Ralph. Uh, you know, I we have only about two minutes left here, and I, I wanted to share this verse with you. It's Matthew 25, 34 through 40. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger? And invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you. When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Amen. Amen. 
you know, if you want to store up treasures in heaven, if you want your life to count, not just for the temporary, um, I really encourage you to get involved in prison ministry. This is phenomenal. I was at the beach just a couple uh, days ago, uh, not a couple, I'm sorry, a couple months ago, and I ran into a guy, I was sharing the gospel with people, and the guy tells me, I need prayer. He goes, in eight days, I'm going back into prison for 20 years, and this is the last day I get to spend with my little girl. And there's all these guys out there who are struggling, missing their families. And I just really want to encourage everybody out there, um, get in contact with Roger Ziegler, with Cairo's prison ministry, with pr- uh, pastors to prisoners. Um, listen to the testimonies of Ralph and Freddie and uh, and get involved, um, because if you want to see a difference made in somebody's life, if you want to see Christ work, uh, that's how you do it. Amen. Guys, I want to thank you so much. We're just about out of time here. I want to thank you so much for being on the radio this evening. It's been a a real honor to have you on the show. Well, Kevin, well, thank you thank for you having too. us, brother. Yes, thank you. It's a big bless. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. And uh, guys, next week we'll be back here on the radio. Everybody listening out there will be back on the radio talking about other issues. But uh, don't let this just go by and just move on with your life. Please get involved. I can't encourage you to do that more. My website is educateforlife.org. This is am1170theanswer.com. Ooh.